The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. you got markets picking things up in negative territory. Interesting that we're pretty much where we were when we kicked off the program yesterday. Markets accelerating higher to above 4,500 last night. At the close, we make it to 45.15 about overnight, and then we accelerate lower from 3 a.m. Eastern time. About when Europe opens, you trade from 45.10. We're down at about 45.80. You come into that 8.30 volatility on retail sales, strong retail sales. We're lower by a bit. We got higher yields. Could be the story, man. We've been talking about them here. I think the 10-year is pushing almost 4.24% right now. Let's jump around. You start off with the S&Ps, as I mentioned, right back near the lows of yesterday morning before this market charged higher kind of right near the end of the program, right? Came on the air at 9.30, really didn't start accelerating until that 9.50 a.m. bar yesterday. This morning, we're down by 27 points. That's six tenths percent in the S&Ps. Got the NASDAQ 100, we're off by 65 points. That's about four tenths percent. As you see, not quite down to the lows of yesterday, right? We're almost 200 points above the lows of yesterday versus the S&Ps. You got the Dow well below that level. With the Dow accelerating lower, off 267 points, that's three quarters percent in the red, and you get the Russell off nine tenths percent, 19 and 11. Let's jump to the dollar index as we jump around. Now, this one's an interesting one. We have yields continuing to rise. That should correlate to a strong dollar, which would tie into strong retail sales, right? You get a strong economy. You have yields ticking higher. That's going to put a bid in the dollar. Not exactly what's going on right now. You actually have the euro trading higher, and you have weakness in the dollar, and that is all going on as we have the 10-year. Well, that's a little bit of a recoil there. Excuse me, quite a recoil, actually, off 830. We're catching a bid. Excuse me again, 10-minute bars, and we just popped from 109.11 right now. We're trading at 109.26 in the 10-year. You're still negative by 10 ticks. And boy, you take a look at that daily, right? Yeah, we've gotten a little bit of a bounce off the lows, but boy, you're talking about lower price and higher yield coming at you. It's been quite a three and a half months since May when the 10 year was at 117. Quite. All right, with that in mind, we jump around to commodities now. We got crude, 81.49, backing off a bit. You jump to gold off by $7 right now at 1937. We jump over to the volatility index, the VIX. With a 15 handle this morning, catching a little bit of a bid from the close of yesterday, but somewhat back to the open that we had basically yesterday morning uh, would make sense. That's where the S&P is basically right back to where we were yesterday morning before you had that acceleration to higher price. We'll see what happens on the open today, but we're going to have some more economic data and let's get into some of it. July sales rose 0.7% after upward revisions to the prior month. Broad gain included firmer sales at online and clothing retailers. Nine of the 13 groups increasing here. I think it says in one. There it is. Uh, nine of retail, 13 retail categories were increasing last month, including sporting goods stores, clothing outlets, restaurants, and bars. The number comes in at 0.7% month over month. That is a big number, man. The median estimate, just 0.4%. And the control group, which is a little bit different there, 1% month over month versus just half a percent was what they were looking for. Big numbers. Uh, and as they say, the latest figures illustrate how a strong labor market paired with rising wages is giving many Americans the ability to spend on a variety of goods and services. Consumers remain a key support to the U.S. economy. And, yeah, they are buttressing, um, buttressing it against recession in the face of higher interest rates. And just take a look at the trend, though. You're talking about the control group here is in the line, the black line. I wish they could use a little bit better colors on some of these charts, right? But they keep it all black and white. Retail sales rising 0.7%, actually 0.73, okay? And the 1% control group actually 0.99. Some strong numbers recently at a time when we are at a pretty restrictive policy rate, right? We got Jackson Hole coming up in 10 days from right now, August 25th. Uh, happens to be the same day that uh, everybody needs to show up in Georgia 
for the new indictments. But nonetheless, Home Depot. Well, let's jump to Home Depot. There's some action on Home Depot. Pretty much unchanged this morning. You're down to about 328 from 329.95 for Home Depot. Jumping over to their numbers. I was taking a look at that earlier. Tops estimates. Uh, the CEO cites pressure in big ticket discretionary categories. Yeah, $15 billion share buyback. That'll help the equity for sure. Comp sales, though, falling 2% in the quarter. Smaller, dis smaller decline than analysts foresaw, but nonetheless a decline. Total customer transactions also falling from a year ago. Average ticket rising slightly, indicating higher prices, still propping up some of that. I mean, that's just the deal, man. That's not going away, okay? Higher prices, of course higher prices are propping up numbers when you're dealing with costs. Or, I mean, we're now at a time, right? What are the recent ADP payroll numbers show? They show something like if you're changing jobs, you're making 10% more over a year. If you're staying in the same job, you're making like 6%. Something like that, right? Staggering numbers. They were much higher. Those are some of the lowest numbers we've had. Of course, they're going to be dealing with higher ticket prices. We're, we're way past that. Those prices are never going back, man. Um, so, yes, you have customer transactions falling. You have comp sales falling slightly. But average ticket price obviously rising is what it should say as we are a couple of years into some pretty dramatic inflation pressures. While there was strength in categories associated with smaller projects, we did see continued pressure in certain big ticket discretionary categories. I mean, it would make sense if you if you didn't do something during COVID that was big ticket discretionary. If you didn't do something like that when you had access to that capital at three and a half percent to refinance four percent, whatever it may be. The market is probably not as large right now for people in that market, right? Because um, what are you going to do? Well, if you're going to take out a home equity line, you're going to pay a bigger price for that. Maybe you're just going to wait and see how the economy does. Everyone's talking about a soft landing. Let's see if that actually comes due before I put a fifty to $75,000 expansion on my house or redo a kitchen, something like that. Um, yeah, so we got Home Depot, 465 a share on a diluted basis, above the average estimate. Um, and they got a $15 billion buyback. That's a big one for sure. Home Depot slightly lower, but the market's lower as well this morning. So they're only off by $2 right now, and you get the S&Ps off by 25 You jump over to low shares. They jump around basically flat on the Home Depot numbers as well. All right, what else we got here? Yeah, I mean, you know, for a moment, jumping to the same story in terms of the Wall Street Journal. Whoops. Shoppers boost retail sales for fourth straight month. Consumers spent more in July on food, clothing, and online. So as they break it down, um, a faster pace than in June. It was higher than the 0.2% increase in consumer prices. I mean, it's a high number. We'll see if we get some action today, man. Yields have been rising, almost pricing in this type of a realization. We're getting a little bit of a boost today. But you're only back to where you were at 2 in the morning last night, folks, for some context on those yield numbers. With the 10-year right now trading at 109.28. But, yeah, that's quite a pop on yields. Keep your eye on those yields today because it does make sense now as we have yields dropping. You have the dollar dropping. Okay, we got some movement going on. We get the market clawing back some of those losses. Are we going to see a little bit of a reversal today? We spiked to 44.70. You're back to 44.82. And keep your eye on the dollar. Keep your eye on yields. We got 15 minutes to go until the open. Stay tuned, folks. Markets in the red. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down by 19 points right now, trading down about four tenths percent. We got the Nasdaq slightly in the red, Dow off 207. To talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market every trading day, folks, right here at 12 noon Eastern time. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network with our man Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team. Uh, and let's jump right into it. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, uh, uh, back from a little vacation, uh, but looking at these markets that are starting the day, Tommy, a bit heavy, uh, for, for you know for sure. Uh, absorbing a little bit of data, absorbing some news out of Fitch rating, uh, some weak, weak China data, and you know, Tommy, we've been talking about really since the beginning of the market on Monday morning that China. The news flow, I'm such a big proponent of the news flow and what's happening and the China data and the moves by the Chinese government, it's starting to be concerning. And I think the markets are finally starting to pay attention to what's going on over in China because, you know, the, these markets tried to be heavy yesterday and they bounced. We'll see if they bounce today, but the markets are starting another day heavy on more weakness out of, uh, out of China. Good, solid retail sales numbers here in the U.S., but eventually these problems in China are going to come our way, Tommy, and the, the data out of China is not good. Yeah, we saw some missed payments yesterday, right, or a missed payment. Um, yep. Yeah, tough to hide it when you don't have the cash to start paying your bills, and we'll see where that goes as it could reverberate. And you mentioned the retail sales, Matt. Um, what, what do you think of yields, Kevin? Obviously, a topic of conversation. We're getting quite a bounce right now, actually, though, on those numbers. But, boy, quite an escalation to lower price and higher yield, challenging the recent highs. Uh, what do you think about the yield conversation? All the talk now is that maybe the Fed stays a little bit longer. we got some hot retail sales, and we got a 10-year right now that's basically flat. But, boy, you're at 110 down from 117. Uh, about three months ago, what do you think of those yields pushing above 4.2% on the 10-year right now? Yeah, what I was surprised this morning, Tommy, is that yields uh, were, you know, higher this morning. Bonds were lower, even though, uh, you know, the, the markets were down. Now, since that uh, since that n data came out, they about, I what was it, 7.30 early this morning, they hit 427 percent overnight now they've come down uh back down you know they're they're four point 
4.19 right now as we sit, but man, some volatility in in the, in the ten year market, Tommy, this morning. And yeah, I rates have drifted higher over the last couple of weeks. You put up, uh, let's go to a twenty day chart. I mean, straight up over the last twenty days. So it's kind of interesting what's going on with yields. You know, the dollar has firmed up, the yields have firmed up. Until this morning, and some of the China data, crude oil has been firming up. None of those are good for stocks, Tommy. And so, yeah, uh, uh, you've got the 10-year sitting right around 4.2%. I'm sure stocks are going to start to take notice. Although this summer, they pretty much absorbed a lot of these numbers. Of course, you know, a lot of run here. Did I lose you, Kevin? Are you there? Sorry. Yeah, I'm here. I got you. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think the, the, these markets are going to get a big, bit interesting here. And I think this China data, these heavy markets that we're starting the day with, they're here to stay for a little while, Tommy. I think things are going to get a little choppy. Let me ask you, staying on yields, what do you think? We got Jackson Hole coming up in like 10 days. Are you looking for any surprises? Yeah. Obviously, you know, there's no crystal balls, as we say. Um, but extending the conversation on the yields, what are you looking for? I mean, the whole conversation is, yeah, we're probably done hiking. Maybe they stay for a while. Are you looking for anything from Chairman Powell, or is that kind of going too far out with their September well, meeting the question, a good five weeks away? It's but about we got 10 Jackson days Hole away. Coming up in Jackson Hole is about 10 days away. I think he speaks on the 25th. And – I don't think he'll do what he did last year when he gave a quick eight-minute speech that, remember, took the markets to the woodshed, uh, and the markets reacted very negatively to that. But we're at a different place now than we were a year ago, right? He's got rates currently restrictive. It could be a much different tone out of Jerome Powell that, than it was a year ago, Tommy. So, yeah. no, I'm not expecting any fireworks. But that being said, you know, Jackson Hole usually does make some type of headlines, Tommy, so I wouldn't expect there to be no headlines. We live in interesting times, right? And it's always in play. Uh, with that in mind, we got some earnings coming out still, Kevin. Uh, you guys got anything coming up in terms of equities on fast market at 12 today? Earnings are still on the, on the docket with a focus on retail. We're going to look at Target. We're going to look at uh, TJX. And we're going to look at JD.com today, a whole bunch of retail as we get to the second half of earnings season. We'll cover them all, and we'll look. And boy, that was an interesting one. I just pulled up Target as you were talking about that on the Thinkorswim platform, uh, pushing lows. Then you pull up TJX, pushing highs. Uh, boy, you talk about a dichotomy in some of those retail specific equities. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always. Good to have you back from vacation. I hope you did your part in that services economy, pushing out some capital out there, uh, enjoying some August vacation, but great to have you back, man. And we look forward to the show at 12 o'clock today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, folks. Check it out. Fast Market 12 today. And you heard it. Yeah, talking Target, talking TJX. And look at those charts, right? I got it up here going back three years on a weekly pretty remarkable that you got to go back more than three years to encompass the COVID pullback, right? That's bonkers, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got to do that in my own head every single time. I got to go, wait a second. No, that can't be more than three years ago. Yes, that's three and a half years ago when COVID hit. Absolutely wild. Um, Tommy just turned two and a half at the beginning of this month. That is wild in its own right. But yeah, target shares back to 129 from the double peak it got back in 2021 at 268 and as i mentioned quite a difference when you pull up tjx pushing highs at $86.21 kevin mentioned excuse me earnings and as i mentioned home depot let's check in on them this morning oh there you go we got the conference call they just said something they liked in the last 5 minutes as home depot just charges from 327 up to 330 right now Low is not quite catching that quite the same deal, but we got headlines making its way on Home Depot right now for sure. All right, and Kevin mentioned it as well. So this is, he was talking about Fitch warns that may be forced to downgrade dozens of banks, including, including, how dare they, J.P. Morgan, uh, cut its assessment of the banking industry's health in June, a move that analyst uh, said went largely unnoticed because it didn't trigger downgrades on the bank, but another one-notch downgrade in the industry score would force Fitch to reevaluate the ratings on each of more than the 70 
U.S. banks it covers. It would make sense, folks, um, as you have an analyst warning that the U.S. banking industry is inch closer to another source of turbulence, downgrades, right? And we all know how it works, man. In terms of you get downgraded, you're paying more money on your capital. And it might make sense that that should be the case, folks. And I don't think that we'd go over the cliff and default forever. But if I was a betting man, I would say there's a distinct chance over a period of 5, 10, 15, or 20 years that somehow Congress is not able to agree on something. And that might cause an impasse that would cause a delay in us paying our bills. And many of those bills we're paying are actually to companies we work for or to ourselves. Do you own any I-bonds that you bought during the inflation crisis that, or you just have in general? Well, yeah, those are going to have to get paid by Congress paying our bills. So uh, we'll see where we go. Lots to talk about, folks. We'll take a look at some of the other equities when we get Currencies, back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open in negative territory. S&Ps, though, catching a little bit of a bid right off those market lows. You got the S&Ps only off about 16 points right now. We'll put it back to a five-minute chart. And you can see we're about 20 points off of the lows. We're right back to that first acceleration. This is going to be an area we tested a couple times at about 5 and 6 a.m. Eastern time. We're bouncing around at that area, about 44.90 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 was slightly lower by about 50 points this morning. That is being helped out by one of the magnificent seven 
NVIDIA up by 1.5%, extending the gains yesterday. You had Morgan Stanley out there saying that maybe this pullback is a good entry point as they expect to beat. Uh, and talk about a surge higher, man. The stock trades from about 403 to 440 almost yesterday. We take a look at the daily on this equity. Remember their last time they, I mean, look at this earnings, right? This thing was trading at 150 bucks last November, nine months ago. They crush it in February. They knock it out of the park in May when everybody kind of comes to the realization that, hold on a second, everybody's spending billions of dollars and they all want NVIDIA chips. And that's when the real acceleration in the market really extended itself. And right, I mean, we just pulled back 80 bucks, man, from those highs to 400. Maybe it's not the buy so much, but extending those gains again today, NVIDIA shares. All right, we jump over to some of the home builders. Warren Buffett, he's liking the action in the home builders, man. They disclosed a position after the close last night in D.H. Horton. D.R. Horton, excuse me. I'm pulling up the other, here we go, the other equities that they went into. They went into NVR. That home builder, I'm not as familiar with them. Yeah, construction, sale of single family detached NVR Inc. How big are they? Let's see. Not bad, $20 billion company. We jumped to DHI. How big, how big are all these companies? $42 billion for DR Horton and then Lennar as well. So Lennar's up 1.2% on that number in terms of Berkshire Hathaway getting into all three equities. So you got Lennar at $36 billion, NVR at about $20 billion, and DR Horton at about $42 billion. And Berkshire discloses a uh, disclosed a new position in the companies after the market close. And let's see, we slide over to that article. Yeah, and they've been winners, that's for sure. So the top five holdings in the stock portfolio, yeah, that's the usual suspects. Uh, nonetheless, they're getting into the home builders, man, and not surprising as they want pockets of sustained growth, and boy, these things have been on a tear, and I think that they, I, I guess, you know, Buffett is a smart man, and uh, he probably thinks this trend is not over, folks, okay? And if rates stay high for a period of time, the supply of homes, people are trapped into their homes. I was having this conversation yesterday. It's interesting to think about, though, right? So many people are, quote, unquote, trapped in their homes. True, very true. Another aspect of that, though, is that they are trapped by the sound financial decision they made to buy a home in previous years at a lower value, at a lower interest rate, okay? And the reason why they feel trapped is because they are not open to the idea of buying a home at today's price, at today's interest rate, which many people are forced to do if you don't own a home. So yes, you're trapped, you don't have the mobility, but you're only trapped by that good financial system um, situation that you find yourself in, which is very different than being trapped in, say, when you're underwater or something to that degree, right, where you are actually trapped by debt that you are unable to unload. In this case, you're just trapped by equity that you have locked into a financial instrument that you've purchased with a massive amount of debt at an interest rate that you can no longer access. So it's a little bit of a shift there, but yes, you are trapped. Um, just not the same financial hardship in many areas. Nonetheless, you got home builders trading higher. You got NVIDIA trading higher yet again. Uh, what do we got? What else is going on? Jumping around to some of the companies. We talked about Home Depot. Let's check in how they're doing on the conference call. They're higher. 1.7%. We'll call it 1.5. We jump over to low shares this morning. Down about 8 tenths percent. We keep our eye on some of the streamers. Netflix down 9 tenths percent. Saw the story out there. Disney off 1.2%. That uh, There's another... Let me see if I had it up. Did I? Uh, I'll find it next. That the studio's offered another deal. Don't think that that's going to... This thing's going to take some time to play out, man. We jumped to Paramount off about 1.3%, right? Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. The market weighing on that to a degree. Let's jump around to some of those banks. Yeah, this is why. You got the Russell right now down 15. You got the Dow off 180. And we only have the NASDAQ 100 off 35. You got JP Morgan off 1.2%. You got Wells Fargo off 1.3%. Bank of America shares off 1.7%. Citi off 1.5%. We jump around to some of the airlines. American off 1%. Delta off about 1% as well. Let's see how the FANG stocks are trading. Amazon in the positive. Retail sales, they got to like that number, right? Amazon shares up 3 tenths percent. Take it. 
on the 10 minute chart. Yeah, they catch a bit on those strong retail sales numbers. <coughs> Excuse me, we jump over to Walmart. They're up by one tenth percent. Target shares catch a small bid. They're up by about half a percent. So what do you got a dividend on here? Yeah, so you got a dividend today, I guess. That's probably the reason why. Hey, I'm trying to recalibrate this chart. I guess that's what they do. Yeah, so they probably shave a buck ten off the equities close yesterday, which would put it at one twenty eight. They do. So they shave. Let's check out that right on the Thinkorswim platform. So they show it positive eighty eight cents for the day. You're trading at one twenty nine nineteen. You can see on the chart that it closed at around one twenty nine fifty four. But what they're showing you here is is that they take off the dividend of a buck ten that everybody gets. Uh, that instantly shaves that value off it. You know, and that's probably the dividend that comes out of there. Nonetheless, Target has their numbers after the bell tonight. And jumping over to the story we got on Target, Bloomberg here. Yeah, they're not keen on Target, man. Talking about the pain may be to come. Target struggles are only getting worse. Discretionary good slump. And then you had the LGBTQ <laughs> fiasco, call it what you may. Um, stocks have given away its big gains from the pandemic. Now, what they did talk about in here. So I think they're going to see some of the first slowdowns here. Let's see what they got here. Yeah. You got credit and debit card transactions, 8.7% drop potentially in target sales during the quarter. As for profit, Morgan Stanley to Oppenheimer is warning that Target is likely to cut its annual earnings forecast from the cover level of 775 to 875. They declined to profit, so they're probably going to cut the outlook, man, and they're going to have some issues over here. I think I had another article out here talking about that they are potentially going to come out with declining, declining numbers. So that looks to be the case. Let's jump over and see how Target is priced in in terms of the move after the bell. We jump over to Target shares, as I mentioned. You jump to the Analyze tab. You jump over to the option chain, and we're talking about a $8.80 move priced into their numbers after the bell. So what is that? 6-7% uh, priced in for Target shares. And yeah, I would be careful, man. You know, the other thing about Target, I'll tell you, they're not that cheap. And boy, we go to a Target around here. They got a great toy section. Tommy likes checking them out. It has now turned into a total debacle to check out because they push everybody into the self-checkout lines. And I'm talking 15 people in line for the self-checkout line, folks, with a few of the others. So that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of Olive Garden when we get back. Folks, you might we'll talk think a little that bit if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got a chart of Darden restaurants here. We're down by about 40 pennies, down a quarter percent. We take a look at this thing longer term, though. It has been on quite a run. We go back five years to get the COVID collapse down to 26 bucks. You charge higher to about 160 in the middle of 2021. We just got above that number earlier this year. We're now pulling back to a bit to about 161. So I'll tell you, folks, anecdotal experience. But boy, we uh, there's a shopping mall near us in Lakeland, Florida. We go to one restaurant we enjoy around here is Grillsmith. I'll tell you, there is a huge, you know what, we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll do the whole deal. There is a huge problem right now with air conditioning at number one, our schools, okay, which is bananas, okay, to put it lightly, and I'm being kind using the word bananas on air. Um, but restaurant-wise, there is a huge problem, which I don't understand. Many restaurants we go to right now, very warm inside. Number one, uh, safety for the food, not a good deal. Number two, for the price you're paying, you don't want to be sweating inside of a restaurant. Now, restaurants should be able to get that done, but I'm telling you, there is a big problem because we go a bunch of places. We were at Outback a couple weeks ago, very hot, wasn't even that crowded. Uh, Grillsmith has been very hot, so we don't even like to go there sometimes during these months. Bottom line is we go to the Lakeland Mall, and Grillsmith has an hour and a half wait at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Saturday night. Not surprising, right? And we got we got all the kids. So there's five of us, uh, two small children. We'll call it three adults practically. So we got a table of five that we're looking for at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, right? So Grillsmith says an hour and a half. Um, Tommy the fourth, he's not into waiting an hour and a half for a table. He's two years old. So there's many other restaurants that are in that mall. And uh, we check out Olive Garden. Hadn't been in a while. They tell us they can sit us in about 15 minutes. It was even quicker than that. So they seat us. And here's the deal. It was not hot. So kudos to them. They got some AC. And, folks, it's like 100 around here. Real temperature feels like 110. We're not quite Arizona. And, listen, we got it made during the winter, okay, because it is beautiful. But these are our tough months, hopefully hurricane season, man. Keep your fingers crossed for everybody around Um the Gulf Coast, because the water is so warm right now. So it is happening. But as a restaurant, it's pretty ridiculous. But then, so we get in there, and they tell us after that they have no soda whatsoever. They have no carbonation in the entire restaurant. It's Saturday at 7 o'clock. Place is pretty crowded, okay? But they sat us much quicker than some of the other restaurants. And usually there's a couple, not even the kids. Um, so... Can't order any soda, which sometimes happens. Can't order a soda water or anything like that. Okay, we move past that. I decide I'm going to have a glass of Pinot Grigio, a glass of white wine on Saturday night. She goes back, comes back. Sorry, sir, we got no Pinot Grigio. They got no soda. They got no Pinot Grigio, okay? Uh, I think I had a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. I did. And uh, point being, remarkable that that's the case, folks, that they're that much of a mess on Saturday night. And the other restaurant, Grillsmith, had an hour and a half wait. Olive Garden, you basically walk in there. Now, listen, Olive Garden gets a bad rep sometimes, okay? But the meals are still $22 a pop. 
and they were practically on the empty side Saturday night at 7 o'clock with the availability of the seat versus the restaurant. Now, I already told you, Grillsmith is a good restaurant, but they're hot as well, okay? And they had an hour and a half wait, and then you walk in, you find out why. That is a joke. Now, what I said to the people in my party, and I'm ranting a bit, is that when they told us they had no soda when we wanted soda, they told us, we're a party of five eating at Olive Garden, man. That's an easy three-figure bill over $100, okay? No soda. I asked for Pinot Grigio. They got no Pinot Grigio. They should have offered me a, a glass of something else or something, you know? It, no service, anything going on there. I was not happy. Um, the food was good, okay, but not the experience, and you see it play out. So, back to uh, – no, not D.A. Shorten. Um, D.R.I. Not DHI, Darden Restaurants. That's what we made think of it. The symbols are so similar, but we were just there on Saturday night, okay? Uh, yeah, and I love grilling and homemade food. But it might be getting a little toppy, man, okay, for that number. You came in, and look at where we ran even coming in, into COVID for this number, okay? You chop around at 40 forever. You accelerate to 120 coming into COVID. You dive down to 27 bucks. You make a high of 160, and we're bike right back at that high. So I'd be careful on this one. Not even talking about the market, okay? They got a problem. Now, they have a lot more restaurants than just uh, Olive Garden. They have Longhorn Steakhouse, which I actually enjoy as well. Longhorn's in the same area. They got Ruth Chris, they got Capital Grill, they got Seasons 52, huge fan of Seasons 52. Eddie V's as well. Bahama Breeze, though. They have a little bit of a problem going on here, because I'll tell you what next. Brandon Mall. Brandon Mall, indoor mall in Florida. Okay, we're deviating from the market, but we're doing a little bit of restaurants here. Uh, right now, again, it's so hot. So what are we doing? We're trying to find indoor places to hang out for the next few weeks. It's really, we're in like, we're in the, the, the heat of the summer, to put it, you know, no pun intended. It's a period of two to three weeks where things are really excessive. We got the heat coming with the whole country. Brandon Mall is an indoor mall, beautiful mall. They actually have a carousel in there. It's expensive as can be. I think it's, it's about four bucks a pop. If you put in a $20 bill, you get seven rides. So what's that? Uh, about three bucks a pop for a ride. Uh, but they got an indoor carousel at the mall, right? So we'll go there. We'll do a little shopping. The kids, Tommy especially, he loves the carousel. He jumps on the carousel. Maybe I'll see if I can get a picture during the next break. Show it. Uh, point being, they have restaurants at that mall, okay? They have a uh, cheesecake factory. Great food, of course gotten pretty expensive recently and then they have a Bahama Breeze now Bahama Breeze is owned and I'll pull up these brands this is uh, Darden restaurants okay so you got Olive Garden Longhorn Yard House Ruth Chris uh, Capital Grill Seasons 52 Eddie V's Bahama Breeze Cheddar's so there's a Bahama Breeze right across the street from and I say across the street within the mall from a cheesecake factory okay and I'm sure this happens at many malls across the country right you got that outdoor area potentially in some of the class A malls the big ones uh, with the big anchors in there and you got the outdoor dining you get the indoor they're all attached to the mall to some degree you got restaurant row right Bahama Breeze always has seating available you walk into Cheesecake Factory and I know that's a tough competitor to base it on okay Cheesecake Factory man you're talking about an hour wait sometimes people would rather sit and wait for an hour to get a cheesecake so I do those numbers in my head, man. It's like they got to, you know, you can't not be having soda on Saturday night, okay? You can't not be running out of wine, a glass of white wine at 7 o'clock on Saturday night at Olive Garden. So it was a little bit of a wake up. So I got that chart on my uh, on my radar, folks, for a potential short. We'll see how it's coming up to that area. Uh, volume not too dramatic in August so far, but we'll see how we go as we make a high there on a monthly basis, right? 22 million shares. What are we coming into? Last high, 26 million at the highs, 23. We just got into there with not 30 on the first run, but 21.5 was the month of July. Summer month, light trading as you get into that area. Now, I have to talk about, because we talk about air conditioning, okay? The abomination that is going on in the school system out in Polk County, which is where I'm talking about Lakeland, okay? It's one thing when private businesses do this stuff, right? They, they're gonna pay the price. We're not going to Grillsmith as much as we may have because they get some poor air conditioning in there. Even the hosts at Grillsmith in Lakeland, folks, okay? Even the hosts admit it's hot. They say they fix it, they really don't. You're eating in a hot area, okay? Uh, Polk County schools, okay? You got the teachers union out here because you got like 15 schools out here that they're talking about basically they have big problems with air conditioning unacceptable folks you got kids in there some of them not even have an ac um florida schools unfortunately not great to put it lightly a joke to many 
in terms of the numbers they put up are pretty bad. You can't even have AC. You come back from school. And these are schools right near me, man. I'm talking about Bartow Middle School, George Jenkins High School, if people know it. A um, couple miles down here. AC problems across the board. Get it fixed, TFN man. Garbage. All right. TFNN has just launched we'll their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the dollar index right now. You're down by 28 pennies, trading at 102.91. You see the volatility trading with weakness. And uh, yeah, we've jumped around. We got to keep our eye on yields, right? You talk about it. We got higher price, we got lower yield. So you have a lower yield, you have a weaker dollar. And even with that, we have a weaker market right now, weighing on everything. And you jump over to, come on, where are we? There we are. Uh, the yield curve, real quick, taking a look. I mean, look at the move we got right now going on the two year. We're down by five basis points to 4.92. That is quite a turnaround. And the two-year on the Thinkorswim platform is ZT. That is quite a move, man, from 101.07 to 101.13. And the reason why, folks, is because it's a shorter-term basis, right? So even though it's a smaller move, it's a shorter-term basis. You don't get the same type of volatility. And what do we got? We got lower yields. We got a weaker dollar, and we have a weaker market. And, boy, we get to see how it all plays out today. We're pushing the lows. Interesting that we're right back to basically in the S&Ps, kind of where we were chopping around yesterday morning, even on a strong retail sales number.
things to keep on your radar. We still got earnings coming down the line. You heard Kevin. He's talking about Target. They're talking about TJ Maxx coming up on the program Fast Market at 12 noon Eastern time. We get Jackson Hole next Friday. Pretty remarkable, right? What's today? Tuesday? Today is Tuesday. We get it next Friday. Ten days from right now, August 25th, Jackson Hole, Chairman Powell. Uh, and it's going to be an interesting one, man. Yields on topic. Going to be seeing how that happens in terms of how that moves. Uh, very interesting to see where the 10-year goes in terms of trying to factor in the potential for higher for longer. Or even maybe saying just where we are for longer, right? Because we're already higher. And where the cuts actually come. You can pinpoint when those cuts come. Good, God bless you. Um, but the market, trying to figure that one out. And let's finish it off with... The FANG stocks, Amazon rolls back over as we have this market turning back red. They did catch a bid on those retail sales numbers. They roll over. We go to Apple shares. They're negative by about half a percent. Microsoft right now basically flat. Tesla shares, they get some more price cuts down a percent right now. And the post report video hanging on to gains, pulling back a bit as well. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up now with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Steve Rhodes, live at 11. Fast market at 12. Larry at 1. My dad at three. Have a great one, folks.